Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's time for Facebook Friday. I hope you guys are having a good week. I'm just gonna jump over onto my computer for a second and share this over on my business page. I have two Pink Buckaroo pages, as you guys might know. One is a business page, which is just a Facebook term. And um, Facebook, makes it so that a business page doesn't get seen very well. You only see about one, I don't know, probably one twentieth of what's posted on a business page. And they do it because they don't want your feed filled with a bunch of advertisements, right? So I have that, and then I have a group page, which is what you guys, what we're on right now. And uh, a group page, you choose to be on. You don't just like it, you join, right? So that's what you guys did on my page. And when you do a Facebook group, then you can see everything. Facebook doesn't regulate it as much as a business page. So anyway, that's why I share it. I always share it over the business page in case people um, haven't joined this page because this is where all the fun stuff happens. Hi guys, I see everybody jumping on. Hope you're having a good Friday. Let's see, now I um, can see the comments better when I open it up on my iPad, so forgive me while I do that. All right, looks like we've got some people that I recognize. Hi everybody. All right, so today's Facebook Friday is all about designer series paper. We have a big sale right now. Let's see, I have a, I have a graphic. We have a big sale right now. Buy three packs, get one free. Here they all are. Um, it's not all of our designer series paper. It's mostly all the ones that are $11. And buy three, get one free. And it doesn't have to be all the same. You can mix and match. You probably don't want four packs of the same designer series paper. But um, you can pick out your four favorites, pay for three of them, get one free. And um, when you buy three packs of paper, then you've already qualified for the minimum order for Facebook Live projects. And when you use the hostess code, I send them to you for free next week. So it's a win-win, guys. You get one full pack of paper for free. So if you want to know which papers are in the sale, when you go to the Stampin' Up! page, there's a big graphic right at the top. You click on it and it'll show you everything that's there. Um, the color pack, like the families, the family DSPs, those are not included, and none of the specialty paper. But all the ones, um, just regular packs of designer series paper are included, and I'm gonna use three of them today. I designed three projects showing you how to use your paper so that it's not sitting in your craft space being hoarded. I don't know, do any of you hoard your paper? I know some of us do. Um, and so I want you to use it, and when you get get it on sale, hopefully you'll feel better about using it. We always wanna hoard it because it's so pretty and we don't wanna cut it, but cut it! That way it'll get seen by more people um, rather than just sitting in a closet somewhere. So that's what today's projects are. And um, before we get to the projects, let me just touch base with you on a few other things that are going on in the Stamping Up world. Um, the Stamping Pad family, that's what they're calling it this month. If you buy a starter kit, you get an entire ink pad family, which looks like this, an entire ink pad family for free. We have five of them, brights, subtles, neutrals, regals, and then the end colors. So you could pick whichever one you want. <laughs> I'm seeing, who is that? Mary, she says, I'm so guilty of paper hoarding. I know, Mary, me too. Um, anyway, so starter kit, ink pad promotion. When you buy the starter kit, anytime, it's $99, and you pick out $125 of whatever you want from the catalog, um, and plus there's no shipping, so it's free shipping. So $125, you only pay $99, and this month you add this on, so that's like a $67 value. Um, I was telling my husband about it last night, he was like, that's like getting twice as much for the price, and I was like, exactly. That's why it's such an amazing deal. So if you've been thinking about the new ink pads, the new colors, um, check out the starter kit information. Uh, it's really, really amazing. I, I think this is one of the best starter kit promotions that we've had. I've already had 11 people join my team since July 1st. So they're taking, it, they're taking Stampin' Up! on this. I mean, it really is amazing. So anyway, here's all the details. You can click on my blog, there's information there. Up at the top, there's a tab that says join. So when you click on that, you get the details. And plus there are all these added benefits 
I won't read them all to you, but it's all over there on my blog. All these added benefits of being on my team. My team gets my PDFs for free, which I think is a big draw. Um, also, my class kits for, they get them at cost. Um, and it's just a really good deal. So check it out. If you have questions, let me know. Don't worry about anything that you might be questioning. I've heard it all. So ask me and I will be happy to answer. No pressure. Okay, let's see. Um, announcement number three is this class, Tropical Chic. I'm getting ready to close it in five days. On July 10th, it closes. And then I'm cutting them um, and prepping them and getting them out of here before I leave for Stampin' Up's incentive trip to Alaska. So you've got to get on, in on this by the 10th. Um, this class includes the Tropical Chic bundle, which is our favorite. Well, I say our, it's one, been one of my favorites and I've seen, seen lots of people use it. Um, and the class includes um, one sheet each from the Tropical Chic DSP, six projects, including the one everybody's giggling over, the little palm tree gift box. It also has a PDF, oh, and a bolt of ribbon. You get a bolt of ribbon. Um, if you want just the PDF, that's an immediate download, and it's in my PDF store, so you can get that anytime, even after July 10th, if you want it. Um, so there's four options on that. Let's see, let me look at my notes. Option one includes the bundle, that's $65. Option two does not include the bundle. The stamps and the framelits, that's the bundle. That's 35. PDF is just 15, and my team gets it for 12. See, I told you, it's a really good deal. Buy the starter kit and you have access to this stuff really cheap because you can order your own bundle with your discount, 20% discount. All right, let's see next prizes. Would you guys like to see who won prizes last week? Um, I always do two kinds of prizes. One prize for people who share this video. I see you guys already telling me that you're sharing. Hi, Janie. Um, I already see that you're sharing, thank you. I go through and randomly just pick out one or two people each time who have shared and you're the winners. And then the second prize, you go over to my blog and there's something at the bottom of today's post. It's called a widget. And you enter, you, I ask you a couple of questions and then that will automatically generate a winner for me as well. So the winner for last week, the stitched all around bundle, the framelits and the stamp set is Karen Larson. Karen, I have emailed you already. Hopefully you get it. Let me know where I can send your new bundle. Congratulations, Karen. All right. I'm, I keep reading you guys' comments. I'm trying to complete my sentences, and then I read your comments. So if I seem disjointed, I appreciate. All right. Um, Elise is saying, not in quiet mode. Hopefully you guys can hear me, right? I watched a live video just a couple days ago and couldn't hear it at all. And then I tried to watch another one yesterday and couldn't hear it. So... I don't know, I think it's a Facebook thing. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, and then the last week I said I would be giving this one away for uh, sharing, so I picked one random winner and it is Mary Hines. Mary Hines, I need you to message or email me because I don't have your contact information and I'd like to get this out to you. So congratulations, Mary. All right, so um, <laughs> Mike, Mike's trying to take away the prizes. Mike, you'll win one, the, one of these days. I know you will. Um, okay, so this week what I'm giving away another bundle. And this is the Pick a Pennant Bundle. And I love this bundle. And I have yet to use it. I keep thinking, okay, I'm going to use this on the next project. And then I forget. So it's this stamp set with the coordinating framelits that cut out the cute little pennants. And the way to win this is to hop over to my blog right now, pinkbuckaroo.com. Scroll to the bottom and there's a little thing, you enter your information. Um, and I'm asking you a question this week, what's your favorite stamp set from the new cat? I guess we shouldn't call it the new catalog, it's July. From the current catalog, what's your favorite stamp set? So let me know. I'll pick a winner for this next week. It'll be open till Thursday, okay? So enter for that. And then I've got two stamp sets to give away for sharing. So share the video, share it on your page, share it in other crafting groups that you know, and you'll be entered to win. One of them is a hostess set, artfully folded, and then this one, P.S. You're the best. You know, I made my husband's Father's Day card with this, and then I forgot about it. I found it when I was looking through my pictures the other day. I need to put it on the blog. It's so cute. So, share, and you'll have a chance to win one of those, okay? 
Now, if you have never joined me for Facebook Friday, let me just tell you how we do it. I always do three projects, and the projects I have, I always type up a PDF that looks like this. And if you go over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, it's up right now. If you're watching the recording or watching it on YouTube, there will be a link there directly to this um, blog post that has this PDF. Scroll down under the last picture and it's there's some um, text there that says click here for the PDF. You can click it, you can print, you can save, you can do whatever you want, but everything that I'm doing today is here. All the products listed with the item numbers in case you wanna order. Hi, Crystal. And then underneath, I think that's the most important part, the measurements. Today's stuff has a lot of measurements in it. So make sure you go and get that. Um, and then on the, the second page, here's all the other stuff I've been telling you about. There's the Tropical Sheet class with a direct link there. And then the ink pad promotion with a link and the DSP cell, all right? So it's all there. Um, the last bit of information I need to tell you about Facebook Friday is that I send make and take packs to anybody who orders in the next four days. Let me show you what they look like. They come packed like this. All right, they're ready to go. And I have a link there for you to, to jump back to the video if you forget. Um, so you get these for free, totally free with a minimum $30 order using the hostess code. And you know what? I had a hostess code thing and I don't know what I do with it. I printed it out, but I don't know. Anyways, it's here. The hostess code is right here. All right, right there. So make sure you use the hostess code unless your order's over $150, then you get the stamp and rewards and I'll still send you the free projects, okay? Oh, I see Marion says she's on vacation in Utah. I love Utah. I've been to Utah many times on stamping up um, free stamp, stamp up events and I love Utah. I keep telling my husband I wanna take the kids there to go do all the hiking and all that's so beautiful. So I'm jealous. All right, so. I think I told you everything, and I'm just wondering where I put my Facebook Live sign that I put up. I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm going to turn the camera, and I'm going to hook it down. It's going to be kind of awkward for a second. If, if for some crazy reason I accidentally hit done on this video, just refresh the page, and I'll start a new one, okay? All right, so I'm going to turn you guys. Let's see. Oh, this always scares me. All right. There we go. Oh, look, there I am again. All right. Now, I'm going to hook you into the one that I have, my phone mount that is mounted to the ceiling, you guys. My husband mounted one to the ceiling for me. All right, let's get us all adjusted, and we'll get stamping. This is how I see your comments. See, so that's how I know what you're saying to me. All right, now let's see our three projects today. One is a card. I'm really irritated. Oh wait, did I find it? I think I found it. We're making three projects. One is a card and two are giftable 3D items. And you can see from this right here, I actually pre-recorded a clean recording for you guys, that'll be over on YouTube. So if you want to come back and watch and you don't wanna hear all the chit chat, you know, all the hey and all that silliness, they're clean recordings and they're over on my YouTube channel. So you can check that out, okay? All right, let's get started. So here we have three projects, three different designer series papers. And actually, this is my Stamp Club To Go project this month. Stamp Club To Go members, I hope you're not mad that I'm spoiling it for you. You know what, I have um, an alternate. Let me show you this one. I always do three projects for my stamp club to go. One is a card, one is a 3D, and then the other one is a scrapbook page. There it is. And for those who aren't scrapbookers, I do an alternate card. So here's the card, and here's the scrapbook page. I try to keep them similar, using mostly the same things. This one has an inside. Oh, no, this one doesn't. For Stamp Club, we did the inside, but I guess I forgot to do this one. Um, so anyways, that's just a tidbit. And this paper, goodness, the rabbit is under my feet today. <laughs> this is the en route paper that we'll be using. 
And okay, so I'm gonna set that one there because we're not doing that first. Then we're using, this is the one we'll do first. So then I'll tell you about this. So this is the second one and it's an explosion box and it uses the Animal Expedition. Um, <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. Animal Expedition um, Designer Series paper. All right, so let's move that aside and let's just do the first one here. Now I, like I said, I did two videos already. I'm not gonna do a video for the card because I think it's pretty easy. It doesn't need a video, but these two 3Ds definitely need a video. So what paper am I using here? This is the bundle, the sweet, the sea of textures. You guys saw my class last month. I am madly in love with this. And here's the paper that goes with it. So let's look at it. Um, each pack comes with 12 sheets, two of six double-sided designs, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna show you one of each. You'll get two of each of these. This is very beautiful. Didn't they do a good job making it look um, like a tranquil ocean? I don't know, I just really felt like they really captured it well. Um, soft sea foam on the back. This one is a polka dot one, and we're gonna make the bag out of this one today. On the back is that balmy blue color I love, looks like water. This one's really funky, and that's what I used on this one. And you can see whatever's on the back, it goes. It always coordinates. Um, this, the colors are no, all through the papers, all the same colors. So you could mix, you know, three of these together and the colors are always gonna coordinate. So that's mint macaron. And then this one looks like sand on the bottom of the ocean to me, because there's bubbles. And then Tranquil Tide, gorgeous, rich color. Look at those two together. Mm, beautiful. This is, I love this like, um, you know, um, distressed, very distressed. Good for masculine projects. And there's sand again. This one's really funky too, and I think that's really good for masculine also. Looks like um, printmaking, you know, like they, did printmaking to make these. And on the back, a rich razzleberry. So now I posted a tip for you this week. I hope you saw it. On the back of your designer series paper pack, it always has the three, or not three, all the colors that are used. So right here it lists balmy blue, crumb cake, fresh fig, mint macaron, night of navy, soft sea foam, tranquil tide, whisper white. So when you get this paper and you pull it out to use it, there's no guessing of what color cardstock you need. You just look on there and pull those out and pull the inks out and you'll know they'll, they'll all match. So that's a really good thing. It's also listed in the catalog too. So um, if you you know, sometimes I throw that back in a way and then I'm like, oh, I can't remember. So always you can look in the catalog and it'll list it. Okay, so let's make the bag first. And I have to tell you guys that I screwed this up the first time I did it on the video. <laughs> and I'm glad I did the video before I did the live because um, I had to go back and tweak one thing on here. I've been, I don't know, I blame it on summer. I had summer brain lately. Okay, so here's the pattern we're gonna use. It's got that balmy blue on the back and it measures. Now remember, all of this is right here on this PDF. So that's what I'm looking at. Don't feel like you have to scramble to write it all down. This measures six inches by 11 and a half inches, okay? Now we're gonna score the short side at one and a half. Be careful when you score your DSP because it's thin and it rips really easily. So one and a half and five and a fourth, and then turn it, and score the long side at one and a half, five and a half, seven, and 11, okay? And if you use the Simply Scored, it has two ends on it. One is thicker than the other, and I always use the thick end. I don't know, do you guys who have this, do you always use the thick? I tend to tear the paper when I use that fine tip, that smaller little ball there at the end. Maybe it's just a personal preference. I don't know. All right, so now look, I remembered this week to get my bone folder out. Usually I can't remember to do that. All right, so we're gonna just burnish. Well, if I pay attention to what I'm doing, I'll burnish them correctly. Burnish your score lines. And sometimes it's easier to see the score lines on one side rather than the other. Busy patterns usually are hard to see that score line. All right. I don't know. I. 
I like to just burnish with my the end of my finger like that. I'm trying to be fancy for you guys and use my bone folder, but honestly, I think I'd rather do it with my hand. But it does get a nice crisp fold when you use that bone folder. All right, so we've got it all folded and ready. Now, look at the end that has the skinny, the skinny tab here, okay? And we're gonna cut, this was the 11 when we scored at 11. We're gonna cut out both of those little rectangles on the end, like that. Okay, now take your scissors and cut this tab, cut it the corners off of the tab, like that. All right, now here is the skinny. We've got one and a half here and we've got three fourths over here. The three fourths side, we're gonna fold over like that, so we don't need to worry about that one. Down here on the bottom, you're just gonna cut these score lines up to that horizontal score line like that. All right, and that's all the cutting you're gonna do. Now, get your adhesive and run it underneath that three quarters of an inch side and fold it over, just adhere it. And then we've got this tab that we cut the corners off. We're gonna put some adhesive on there. And if you fold this over, it should line up perfectly. If you have scored all of your score lines right, it'll line up perfectly. That's how I knew I had scored it wrong the last time. <laughs> it wasn't lining up. And that's what it looks like, okay? It's like a box. Now we're gonna put these guys, these little tabs in, and let's see, I want this to be the back. Any side that has rough, side, rough edges, I make that the back. Fold that over, and then a little more adhesive and fold that over. Now make sure you're using a good adhesive. I know Fast Fuse isn't around anymore, but like I've told you in the past, I'm trying to use up my 200 refills <laughs> that I have. But use tear and tape. Tear and tape is um, the best adhesive, and next I would use your Tombow. Don't use snail on a 3D project. Okay, so here's your box, and you're just gonna pinch these sides like that to make it a bag, and that's it. Easy, right? And a good way to use your paper. If you have a lot of paper, get it out, cut them into six by 11 and a half inch pieces and just start making some gift bags. These would make really good party favors. Um, you know, you could even put like a gift card in there with some of the little scrunchy stuff. I don't know, it's a good size. Okay, so now I've done a little bit of stamping ahead of time. I'm not stamping, I mean, um, cutting, die cutting. I've cut out a Whisper White stitched circle. This is the not the largest, the, the next down, the third largest. And I am going to take, first I'm gonna take the netting. And the netting, the, the netting framelit, which looks like this, is my favorite framelit in the collection. And then this, the netting stamp is really fun too. Really good texture stamp. All right, so I did that in crumb cake. And then I'm gonna take the tall grass, the tall sea grass, and I'm gonna do it in soft sea foam. And I'm gonna do it at different varying heights. So you can move your stamp up and down to make it look like tall grass and short grass, like that. Okay. Close that up. Now we're gonna move that circle aside. We're going to put some fish in here. We've got this frame that looks like this, but I really think if I was gonna cut those fish out, I would give up after gluing about two of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out of this and back it with a soft sea foam circle so that you can see all the fish, but we didn't have to glue them in. All right, so we're gonna put that on the big shot in a second, but before we do that, let's do some stamping. Those would make good treats for your girls. Lisa, what a fun idea. All right, now this is coral, I believe, and I'm stamping it Night of Navy. I don't really think coral comes in Night of Navy. I'm not a diver, I could be wrong, but I don't think it does, but that's okay. It goes with the project, so we're making it. Now the little sentiment, I'm just gonna stamp down here along the edge like that, because I'm just gonna cut it out with my scissors, because I want it to be just a, a box. All right, so we have one other piece. 
Where did it go? It disappeared on me. Do you guys see my early espresso piece? Oh, here it is, under the stamp. There we go. So we're gonna cut out the seagrass, that looks like that, in early espresso, and then the coral has a coordinating framelit right there. All right, let me pull over the big shot. We are going to Alaska in two weeks with Stampin' Up! We're very, very excited. But that means that there's not really been a whole lot of beach for us this summer. We usually, our vacation revolves around a beach. And I'm kind of missing it. Now I know Alaska will be the ocean, but it's a much different atmosphere, don't you think? The Bahamas versus <laughs> Alaska. So maybe the kids are already talking, next summer, next summer, please, let's go to the beach. We have beaches in Texas, but they are not anything like Bahamas or Florida. Usually we go to Florida. This summer, it just didn't work out. All right, so put your fish down on there, like that. I'm not a lover of the beach, of sand. What I am a lover of is being in the sun and the water and just relaxing. So usually at the beach, I prefer to spend my time at the pool. <laughs> but, you know, it has the whole beach vibe. All right, there's our um, coral. Now here's our fish, let's see. Can you see how they popped out of there? They're all stuck in here, so we would use that um, dye brush to get them out if we wanted them. But we don't want them because we just made a little window. All right, and our seagrass. See if I can pop it out, there it is. And let me get this out of here before I lose it. And we can move this back over. Oh yes, Crystal, you're in Houston. I'm coming to see Houston tomorrow. I'll wave. We're going to the Astros game tomorrow. Okay, so now we're gonna layer this right on top of our soft sea foam scallop circle. It's just a little bit bigger. You see, it's just a little bit bigger. And then we've got all these other pieces that we're gonna layer on. Let me cut this, in, this one out. And like I said, I'm gonna use my scissors. So you could use your trimmer if you don't trust your scissor skills. I'm not terribly concerned about these being super straight because it's so tiny. All right, glue dots, glue dots. Let's see, glue dots. All right, I'm gonna put that grass there first. Mm, that might be a little bit too high. Let's make it go down a little bit lower. And then I'm gonna use a dimensional for my coral, my navy coral. <laughs> and then a glue dot again for the words right there. Now, of course, we need a bow and the Knight of Navy gingham ribbon I thought was perfect for this. Don't you love when everything is matching perfectly? Stamping up colors all coordinate, you know, the you got the ink, the Knight of Navy ink, the Knight of Navy ribbon, the Knight of Navy cardstock, whatever you need. You know it's going to be a perfect match. All right, bow on the bottom and last we're just gonna stick it on there with two dimensionals. No, no need to, you know, tie up, put a hole in it, tie up, tie it on. No, we're just gonna stick it on. And I did it over to the left side a little bit. And there you have it. So you can see that has a different, totally different vibe, that DSP. It's brighter and funner and this funner, more fun, brighter and more fun. And that one seems more, I don't know, sophisticated, but I like them both. All right, so there you go, Lisa. You can take these to the beach fast and easy. Those would make great girlfriend gifts. All right, so project number one, I hope you liked it. Think about that bag, but all the paper that you have, all the different papers. Any paper you have would work just fine with that. Any six by 12 or 12 by 12 paper would work just fine there. Um, and you could do it, you know, like this. If you use the Animal Expedition, you could do it um, and use the animals as maybe you're having a jungle party, a birthday party, something like that. So try to think about that with all your paper so it doesn't just pile up. All right, project number two is an explosion box. And the word explosion, I think, is a little misleading because it doesn't actually explode. It just kind of 
pops open a little bit. Maybe pop is even too much of a word, but let me show you what it does. Here's that cute little rhino. And I'm gonna slide off the ribbon. And when I take the lid off, the sides lay down flat. Isn't that cute? And there's another way to use that paper inside that box. Now I know you guys are saying, okay, Erica, what is it? It's a turtle brownie. Hello, look at it. It's got like caramel and stuff. Now we don't have a turtle in this bundle of products, no turtle. But I thought, okay, that'll be fine. It'll go fine with our with our animal paper. This is what it looks like, little Debbie. Um, little Debbie turtle brownies. I got them at Walmart. And I haven't eaten one, are you guys proud? Not one single one, and I hid them from the kids. We haven't eaten any of them, but we're going to as soon as I'm done. Not me, when they get back, they'll eat them. All right, so let's talk about this project. Um, really, if you don't have the turtle brownie, guys, you could put any of the little, you know, the square little Debbies, or even a cupcake would be cute in there. You can take one of our clear plastic boxes that we sell and put it here with candy in it, whatever you wanna do. Um, but the little Debbie, I put a link on my blog for the little Debbie snack finder. You type in your zip code and it'll, and you say, okay, I want to know where turtle brownies are in my area. And it'll tell you where they are, if they're there. Are, are they good, Karen? Have you had them? Yeah, I'm trying really hard, really hard not to eat a lot of sugar. They look really, really good. Okay. So let's talk about this paper since the paper's on sale. Um, and of course I'm using the coordinating framelits and stamps. Um, one thing that Stammen had started to do a couple of years ago with some of their paper is they designed it so that the framelits would also cut out the cute little things, whatever they are on the paper. So you can see that that framelit will cut out that rhino. If you are just wanting something quick and easy, you can just cut him out and not have to stamp in color. And then there's the the kangaroo. I realized earlier that some of the kangaroos are facing left, so the framelit doesn't cut them out. But some of the kangaroos are facing right, and they are, they'll fit. Also, the little giraffe, same thing. There you go. So cute. And, yes, the frog, too. The little frog. Yeah, so fancy, right? Fancy paper with fancy framelits. I don't know. I like it. All right, so let's look at them. This one's a busy, this would be good for a scrapbook page or to cut out these animals. And on the back, this is my favorite pattern, the giraffe pattern. We used this last week, remember, with our little elephant boxes. And then here's the same pattern. Is it exactly the same? Yeah, pretty much exactly the same, just smaller. So if you wanted to use that on like a card front, it's less busy. It's smaller and you get more animals into one little space. And on the back is Calypso Coral Pattern. Here are the little frogs, a whole sheet of frogs and branches with lemon lime twist on the back. Here's a little aviary pattern. And on the back is berry burst, I think. Berry burst and lemon lime twist, bright and bold. This one's so cute, the little hippo sticking his head out. Very cute. A zoo page, I'm thinking, you know, a zoo scrapbook page. And then we've got a basic gray pattern on the back. And then the alligators. There's no framelit for the alligators. They're, they have to be hand cut, but they're worth it. Look how cute they are. And on the back of here is the pattern that we are using today. Now we're not using alligators, but that's okay. It still works with our rhino. All right, so let me get all of my goodies over here on the tray. And we'll make the box, the exploding box first. And remember, there will be a clean recording over on Facebook, I mean, on YouTube of this as soon as I edit it after it's already uploaded. I just need to edit. All right, so let's make the box. You're going to need a piece of Call Me Clover that is seven and a half by eight. And we're going to score all four sides at two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half. Okay, let me see what your question is, Marion. Do those frame kits actually cut those? Yeah, uh-huh, the bigger ones, they do. They actually do, yeah. That's the best part about those framelits is that you can stamp, which is what we're gonna do today, but you could also just cut them out of the, out of the paper, out of the framelit, I mean, out of the <laughs> designer series paper. Hey guys, in case you don't know, DSP stands for designer series paper, which is what Stampin' Up! calls our pattern paper. When I first started with Stampin' Up!, that's one thing I was like, what in the world is DSP? It's a fancy word for pattern paper. I think most of us call it pattern paper. 
All right, the top, we're gonna, it is six by five and a half and we're gonna score it at one and a half. Uh-oh, I'm using the skinny side. Turn it around, one and a half, one and a half, all four sides. And don't push too hard on your, on your DSP, because you'll rip it. All right, let's make our lid first. The first thing I want you to do is cut off the corners from the score line to the score line, making that triangle. Just cut those corners off. This will help in case our score lines are, or our measurements are a little bit off. We'll have, we won't have any paper hanging off on one edge. Now on one side, cut the two lines up to the horizontal score line and then turn it and cut them up the same way, stopping at that horizontal line. All right, so go ahead and score, score them, fold them, burnish them. Use your bone folder if you're fancy. I'm not, I'm not gonna be fancy, I'm just gonna do it. All right, now, tear and tape. This is your project that you definitely would like tear and tape, it would work. And I always like to see where the edges are gonna meet. So I'm gonna put my tear and tape right here on this side. And tear and tape, like it says in its name, you just tear it and tape. And then you, you know, it sticks and you peel off the top. No need for scissors. And it tears really easily. Except when you're making a video, it likes to be stubborn. But most times in normal situations, <laughs> it tears perfectly. Just something about that video camera. I think it's camera shy. Now you could also use your fast fuse here if you have it. We still have that delicious fast fuse. Um, or you could use your liquid Tombow. You're gonna have to put it together, let it sit for a while until it's dry. Um, if you do that, you can use just little clips to hold it together while it dries. All right, so now all we're gonna do guys is fold these in just like that. And there it is. All right, so there's our lid, easy peasy. Now, the bottom is very different, okay? Let's go ahead and fold it. Usually, we make the bottom in the exact same way. Hi, Robin! Um, let's see that this paper pack is one that I would have lots of trouble cutting, <laughs> Darcy. I know, I know, but you know what? If you don't cut it, then it's hidden and no one will see how cute it is. All right, now we're gonna cut out, instead of doing it like we would a normal box, we're actually gonna cut out the four corners. The four corners are squares, so just cut them out. You can use your trimmer if you want them perfectly straight, because I can already see mine are not perfectly straight. But I have a feeling that the person who opens this box, as soon as they see that brownie, they are not gonna care that my sides weren't perfectly straight. Handmade things aren't supposed to be perfect, right? Isn't that what we say, guys? All right, now, those little pieces of paper, here they are, I use the smaller pattern for these animals, and you're gonna need two of them, one, uh, two that are two and seven eighths by two and three eighths. Those go on this side, because this box isn't square, it's actually a rectangle. And then the two square, the other sides are square, and they are two and three eighths by two and three eighths, all right? And they fit on there perfectly. That way, the inside of the box is just as cute as the outside of the box. Okay, so there, now let's put our brownie in. And one thing I found is that these guys were hanging out in the corners, the cellophane, so I was trying to wrap them up like that. You could even put a little bow around it maybe to keep it together. All right, now hold your sides in and slide on that lid and adjust as needed. Hmm, this one's needing quite a bit of adjustment. There we go. All right, there's your cute box. Well, what's going on? Okay, come on, behave little box. Sounds like I'm talking to the pet, the animals. 
Come on, behave there, that, there we go, perfect. All right, so you can see how those kind of, I mean, because it's not a perfect box, the sides aren't adhered together. They're gonna kind of squish in a little bit. All right, now let's make the cute tag. We, as you noticed, this stamp set is a black line stamp set, which means when you stamp it, it's going to not be colored in. It's not gonna be solid. So you can't, if you stamped him in gray, which is what I'm gonna do, he's just a gray outline and his, you know, his middle would be white if you stamped it on white paper. So there are lots of options for you when you need to, hi Belinda, oh, you're watching from the cabin, how exciting. I bet it feels much nicer there than it does here. Um, so you, we have lots of options, okay, to color these in. You can use our watercolor pencils. You could use our wonderful stamp and blends. You could use your ink pad with a blender pen or an aqua painter, or you can do this ink on colored paper, which to me is the easiest solution. So we're just gonna stamp him in Smoky Slate ink on Smoky Slate cardstock, and ta-da, look, he's gray. No need to color. Now there is a um, bird on his little horn, and I'm not really gonna worry about it because when you tie that bow and you slide him under that bow, you really don't see the bird. But if you wanted to color him in, you could color him in with some blends, some Stampin' Blends. Um, you can do Stampin' Blends on colored cardstock, which actually, by the way, we're gonna do that next week. Um, I've already got next week's projects planned and made and they are so cute. So we're gonna use blends next week. And you gotta come back. Now next week is going to be the last Facebook Friday of July. I'm gonna be gone the last two weeks of July. However, I am spending some time in Canada with my friend and she's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You might know her name's Angela McKay. And we're gonna do a special Facebook Live when I'm at her cabin. I don't know when, so don't hold me to it. But we are, have already chatted and we already have plans for what we're gonna do. So make sure you look for that announcement, okay? But anyway, this is the last Facebook Friday of July. So, no, no, I'm sorry. Next Friday is the last Facebook Friday of July. Ooh, getting ahead of myself. Um, this one and then one more, okay? So, I don't know who it was. She said she was having withdrawals from me when I skipped that one week. So I'm sorry, you guys, we're gonna have to skip two weeks. However, when I come back, I'm gonna have so much stuff to show you and tell you it's gonna be awesome. Okay, so that was the Starburst Whisper White, easy peasy. Love it when there's a punch. We're gonna put this right here on there. That kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. Now the sentiment. Okay, you guys ready for something fun and different? Hopefully I can do it the right way. Sometimes I do it the wrong way first. <laughs> okay, this is Call Me Clover ink, which is what the cardstock is. And this is the sentiment. It says, thank you big time. I'm gonna stamp it over here on Whisper White. Whoops, I have ink all over me today. I don't know what my problem is. And then I'm gonna get this punch. And this is the lovely label punch. And it is only available in the box. It's a, it's a gift box. You know, I meant to get the catalog to show you. When you look at the pages that has all the punches, if you go back one page, you'll see this. It's like a gift set. It, is, it comes in a beautiful metal tin with a coordinating stamp set. So that's the only way you can get it right now. I don't know if they're gonna do it differently later on, but that's what I'm using. You can see it has like ticket edges and that's what we're gonna use. However, notice that it's smaller, okay? I'm gonna show you how to make it smaller. I really wanted to use it, but you can see it's much bigger than the sentiment. And it would cover up too much of our cute little rhinoceros. Now, the way you do this is you get a post-it note, okay? And you stick it on and you go in. All right, let's see. Make sure I'm doing this right. Yep, you're gonna go in from the top. Okay, do you see how I did that? Slide it in until it's the right size. See, I could go bigger, I could go smaller, but I'm gonna do it right there and punch it so that the sentiment is the right size on the ticket. How cute. Yeah, I know, once you start doing that, it becomes addicting and I have to start doing it on all my projects. So that's a fun way to get more than one shape 
out of a punch. Not all of them work that way, but this one does. All right, so a dimensional over on the side. And let's put it together. This is Lemon Lime Twist Ruffled Ribbon. I almost called it curled. It has curly edges. Lemon Lime Twist Ruffled Ribbon, and I'm just gonna tie a bow. I cannot wait, Wendy, for Alaska and um, Canada. I have been stalking the Weather Channel app, <laughs> looking at the forecast. Um, you guys may know I live in South Texas where we have winter, um, please, not winter, we have summer, nine months out of the year, sometimes 10 months. And it has been blazing hot since the beginning of May and I'm dying for some cooler weather. I can't wait, I hope it's nice. My mom went to Alaska once when it was, they had some kind of crazy heat wave and it was like 100 degrees with no air conditioning. <laughs> If that happens, I'm gonna have to come home. I just, I don't know. I have just been so excited about the cooler temperatures, but I don't think that'll happen. All right, you guys see what I'm doing? This is our leaf ribbon. Really a fun kind of, it's called ribbon, but I think it's more like an embellishment, don't you? You could cut these off. Wouldn't that be cute on a scrapbook page? Just so, so cute. Um, it's that Call Me Clover color. And all I'm gonna do is tie it once around the bow of that ribbon, just so that it kind of hangs down, it's kind of jungly, kind of gives you a jungle feel. And then last but not least, let's put this on here with a dimensional. Again, this is the cheater method. I'm not gonna actually hook the tag to the bow. I'm just gonna stick it underneath and see you can't even see the bird. And that's it, that's your explosion box. Cute, 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 cute. And you know what, look, did I use, which one? No, that's the old one. <laughs> Here it is. I'm like, wait, where did that one come from? Here it is. So these will be really cute if you have kids. Um, I keep thinking, of, you know, if you had a, an, a zoo party. I know some people have their birthday parties at the zoo. This is a great suite for that. However, this would also be good for just whatever, telling somebody thank you. The one that I really wanted to use but couldn't make it work was the sentiment that says wild about you. I think that's really, really fun. You could hand those out at work for, you know, appreciation, coworker appreciation, I don't know, mailman appreciation, whatever. Everybody likes chocolate turtle brownies, I think. <laughs> All right, so there's project number two. Second way, second way I show, I'm showing you how to use your designer series paper. I hope you guys like it. What do you think? Let me know, Janie, thank you. She says she likes it's cute. I know, it is so cute. All right, so let me make room for the third project. And my friend Janelle, Janelle, I don't know if she's on here today. She says, she she was asking me about cards. And I, cause I always feel like we should do a 3D project, but she was saying she really likes when we do cards. So I'm really trying to include cards more um, when we do these projects. So. Next week will be two cards and one fancy card. A fancy fold, I guess you could call it. Okay, so third project. Let me get a drink real quick. Third project, I told you at the beginning features the in route, on route. I don't know. How do you say it, guys? In route, on route, best route. The DSP is actually called best route, I think. Let's look on the back and see. Yep, best route. I'd rather call it best route because I don't know if we should say in route, in route, on route. I don't know. Anyway, super cute. I know you guys have seen this in the catalog. It jumps out to everybody. Just really different and unique. We've never really had anything quite like this and I absolutely love the paper. So the paper, of course, is included in the sale. And um, like I showed you before, I used it for my scrapbook club this month, not scrapbook club, my stamp club. And I told you guys last week, I have planned a retreat for September 1st. I haven't officially put it out there yet, so don't worry. I will do that in the next week or so. But that's gonna include this whole suite, I've decided. And we're gonna do like a mini album, and some really cute stuff, okay? So here's the paper, and it's, the colors are Blueberry Bushel and Pineapple Punch, those are our new in colors, and this Mango Melody uh, color, which I love. I think it's Mango Melody. 
I, I just assumed, well, let me check. Um, I'm looking on the back, remember? Yep, Mango Melody and Gray Granite. These are all new colors. Blueberry Bushel, Gray Granite, Mango Melody. So the two, we've got maps. Love it. And then the backs are all this Blueberry Bushel. So even if you didn't use it for a, you know, travel or whatever, these blue pieces on the back could be used for lots of things. Here's another map. So you really get four, four pieces of map that you could use. And then the back is another, I really like this one, this kind of grid look. Here's the one we're using today. It reminds me of a traffic sign. And on the back, they're little bicycles. And then we've got airplanes. And oh, another map. I don't think I've even noticed that. Wow, I love it. And these are place markers, right? Pins on a map, I think they're called pins. And then more maps. I don't know, maybe that's not a map. Is that a map? Yeah, I think it's a map. A very simplified map. And then here's some more place markers or pens. And then, oh, I love grid paper, you guys. I've told you that, right? Grid paper. I have a little love affair with just regular grid paper to write on it. I love it. So when I find anything that's in grid paper, I have to have it. Okay, so that's called Best Route, and we are using this pattern right here and this pattern right here. Now, there are other products that go with this suite, including this embossing folder, which, why can't I remember the name? Maps Etc. That's a funny name. I knew I'd remember it. Maps Etc. And it's on that same page with the catalog. And then, I mean, in the catalog. And then there are these little stickers, which we're gonna use. There's also, I should have pulled these out. Let me see if I have them right here. We also have, oh yeah, they're sitting out, okay. These are our memory, uh, Memories and More cards. And they are similar to Project Life where you can scrapbook with them. Um, but I like to use them for card making and for project making. So look, and it's all the same colors but just different, like little sayings, different patterns. So it goes really, really well. So you can see why I decided to use this for a mini album, because all of us are gonna have those fun summer vacation photos that we're gonna want to use to put into an album. This one is really interesting. It's actually embossed. It's interesting. And then it has these little pieces too. If you haven't taken notice of the memories and more cards, I. I neglect them, but I shouldn't. They're so fun. But I love this suite of stuff so much that I decided we've got to do a whole retreat around this, this little theme. So that's what's coming. That is what's coming. So look at that page in the catalog. Look at all the coordinating project or products and check them out. All right, let's make our card. I'll stop talking and we can make the card. Let's do our stamping first. And for all of you fussy cutting, fussy, let's see if I can say it, fussy cutting haters. Those of you that hate to fussy cut, I apologize in advance because <laughs> we're going to do some fussy cutting. All right, blueberry bushel is the first one. You never cease to amaze me. So you can see that sentiment right there. That's not really travel related, right? It could be like a thank you or you are an amazing or congratulations. And then the rest of the stuff is just kind of... Um, travel related, but it all comes back together because it looks like a sign. Super smart on Stampin' Up's part. So here we have that, that stamp. The second one I did is a little map and just a little piece of a map and it's not bad to cut out. So you just take your scissors and go around. Don't get mad. Don't curse me because I'm making you fussy cut. Cut around like that and just leave a white little outline, a cloud, as we said in kindergarten, a little cloud around your picture. And it'll be over before you know it. Now, for those of you like me who like to fussy cut, stamp about 40 of them, like I did, and sit and watch TV with your family and fussy cut. All right, so. There we go. Haters gonna hate, Crystal's right, I know. Haters gonna hate. It's 
all right. Um, Sandy, the retreat will be local and to go. I'll have to go always. Yes. Details are coming. I promise. This um, retreat will be a little higher in price than my normal retreats because it's going to include a lot of product so we can make mini, a mini album and probably 10 cards. Okay, so be looking, looking for it. I'll let you guys know, I'll let you guys know. Okay, so let's put it together. Oh, we got to emboss, emboss, yay. Here is a blueberry bushel piece and our maps, etc. embossing folder. Now I've got to take my magnetic, pla magnetic platform off. Being tongue-tied today, I don't know why. I'm gonna pull out my standard cutting plate. And this is one of our thicker embossing folders. They're called dynamic textured because they're a little bit deeper. So we're only gonna use one of our clear plates. Now one thing Stamp Up has started doing this time is putting this line down here on the um, embossing folders. That's gonna help you put your paper in there so that it's straight. Now this one, we probably don't need to worry too much about because I think even if it was crooked, you wouldn't be able to tell because the pattern's kind of jig jaggedy all over the place. All right, let me put it down and we'll get it straight anyway. All right, just one clear plate on the top. Run it through and voila. Now this one I've really struggled with. I've actually struggled quite a bit lately with my embossing folders, trying to decide if I liked the debossed side or the embossed side better. I kind of like it when it goes down, when the, the, the images is down, so it has, it's called debossed, you know, it's going down. I kind of like that. Actually, I really like it. All right, we're ready to put it together. Let's see if I lost my adhesive, nope. Mango Melody, look at it, you guys. I love it. Halloween, here we come. I'm gonna be using this a ton in the fall. It is like a bright, bold orange. Not quite neon, but not far. And then Pineapple Punch, which is almost neon as well, right there. And then the traffic sign, the traffic cone paper in the middle. And then I think we'll do the deboss side. We're gonna put this one down. This is a two and a half by four and a fourth, like that. And then here is some of that DSP. I cut a little strip, three fourths by four and a fourth. Any of these papers will work for this card, any of them, because they all coordinate. They're all the same colors. Now let's take in our fussy cut images. We'll put the map on first. Oh, you guys are talking and I'm not seeing. Hi, Dana, that's okay. You can always watch the replay. That's all right. I can never catch live videos right when they start either. All right, so I put that map down with a dimensional. Now I'll put the sign on in the, with a dimensional. See how it just barely pokes out? All right, now let's open these. Now, when I was putting together all my Stamp Club projects, I went through several packs of these, and I had trouble deciding which ones to use because they're all so cute. So, hmm. See, I just, I kind of freeze. I don't know what to use. I love them all. Let's do... Let's do a yellow little place marker. Let's do it right there on the sign. And then some of the little dots. And these are um, so tiny that you probably wanna get your, your scissors or your, um, what else do I wanna use? The yellow. Or your paper piercer. And that's it. That's it, that's it, you guys. So look, I use the paper. The pap the designer series paper really is the star, right? It's so bold and bright and cute. And then we added a few things and then we're done. Not even a bow, I didn't use a bow. Are you guys proud of me? All right, so there we have it. Chop it, guys, chop up your paper, use it. Like my friend Kylie in Australia says, chop, love it, chop it. Don't hoard that beautiful paper. All right, let's review and look at all three projects together. Here's our little sea of texture bags and our animal expedition boxes. Let, let me remind you, here's the hostess code that you wanna use by Monday night. 
Monday, what is that, July 9th by midnight. I guess midnight would be Tuesday morning, but it has to be by midnight. You have to use the host's code. Tuesday morning, first thing, you guys, that's when I start cutting. I cut them and I'm done by 10 o'clock, so it has to be in by the time I wake up. Um, now, if your order, if you've decided you want everything and your order is over $150, don't use the hostess code. Use the Stampin' Rewards. You get Stampin' Rewards on your order, which means free stuff. 10% when you hit $150, so you get $15 in free stuff. So you don't use the hostess code. I want you to get that free stuff. I'll still see your order, and I will still send you the Make It Takes for free. Okay? Okay, you guys. Hop over, enter for the prize, share the video for the to enter into that prize, print off and save the PDFs, and spend some time this weekend stamping. And don't forget to get those orders in. Thanks so much for joining me. Let me know if you have questions. I'll scroll through and see if I missed anything, um, and I will answer your questions in the chat, in the, the comments. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.